Kate is a teacher, a blogger, and a two-time stroke survivor. No. When we were younger, Kate was a very dominant child. Being the second youngest of eight children, <laughs> if you want to identify her, Kate always took the lead. And this was no different when she grew up. In 2011, Kate decided to move to the UK and follow her teaching ambitions there. And her favourite part of this were her Friday high fives with her students. And of course, as you can see, the students love that as well. Now, in 2012, July, uh, Kate was struck with her first stroke. Eventually, the headache got so worse that I laid down in a sick bay at this function. And my colleagues put me in this sick bay and just kept on partying. And of course they would, that's, that's just what you do. Um, the, the only problem is when you have a stroke, can I, yeah? when you have a stroke, it's like a room full of balloons. And the moment this stroke happens, you, you get an interruption in the blood flow, balloons in your brain, your neurons, are starting to die, are starting to get burnt and at a rapid pace. So, because I was laying down and trying to sleep this off, I wasn't getting any better, I was in fact getting worse. Due to this, Kate received full possible damage from the stroke. And as you can see, if you look on the bottom hand of the slide, you can see the lighter part, which is actually Kate's occipital lobe. Te technical term is cerebral infarction, which I always <laughs> like to use because, you know, I'm learning more about strokes and now I can to act like I'm a neurologist. <laughs> <laughs> so in hospital, Kate had a lot of friends in London who came and visited her, brought her food as well as enjoyed her hospital food. And of course, they came with the essential items that everyone in hospital needs, like a blow-up boyfriend, was it? <laughs> That's a blow-up kitty cat. That's <laughs> They're the sort of things you want in hospital. You don't want those, uh, those annoying things that you get when you're sick. You just want silly things and things to cheer you up. And so at the very beginning, my friends knew to just deflect by this serious situation by making me laugh. And in turn, I made them laugh. But the reason Kate suffered so much damage, and that damage was that she lost 50% of her eyesight. Um, the loss... It's right, it's from, so it's from here to here on both side, on both eyes. So your eyes go back and then they connect to this one area. So um, it went... It was in my left hemisphere and it went to the right of both eyes. So 50% gone. So because we didn't act fast, on top of losing the 50% eyesight, I also lost sensation down my right hand side of my body. Uh, it's still there now, it's not as intense. It feels like pins and needles constantly. I don't mind it, it's not the biggest issue. Uh, I have a slight lack of balance. But it's not, it, again, I don't, I don't find it a problem because I can still force ride, right, I can still walk. Um, and I made sure to hold people's hands at the beginning when I went on a Euro trip. So, you know, I was winning as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> because we didn't act fast, I got all the list of those problems. And fast is a mnemonic that you use to um, find out if someone's having a stroke. If you suspect that someone's having a stroke, you can do this quick fast, I rather, test. So you look at their face and you see, is it symmetrical? Can they smile? And I also <coughs> ask people to poke their tongue out because the tongue is one of your strongest muscles, you're probably aware of that, and it can easily show uh, a reflection of the hemisphere that's lacking oxygen. Obviously the mirror image. Uh, then there's arms, so you can ask people to put their hands, arms out in front of them and Chances are, if they've got a, are having a stroke, one of the arms will let, start to fall down. Uh, the next one is speech. And uh, this one is probably one that you might be familiar with. And that is, uh, it, is, their, is their language, um, un, are you understanding what they're saying? Is what they're saying making sense? Um, and also, if you, is, is their voice slurred? And if you ask them a question, are they, going, are they answering it properly? So the same with, um, you can ask me that in arms, but I like to put it in with the questions. So when I got asked a question in particular, they asked me the year, it was 2012 at the time, but and most of the way through, so I should know. And I said, 
that's a hard one. <laughs> yeah, it, it was funny. I thought it was funny. And then they also asked me who the leader of the Commonwealth was. Of course they did. It's England. And I said, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. And they said, it's que the Queen Elizabeth II. And I said, no, she is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just couldn't believe that such a, a, a lady could still be alive. So the next one, yep. The final one is time. So if you suspect that yourself or anyone else is having a stroke, time is of the essence. Get them medical attention as soon as possible because time is brain. Now, for Kay, she was in such a hurry to leave hospital and get on her Euro trip that she only spent one week in hospital after the first stroke. She then returned for out of patient rehab, but as soon as she could pass the test, she was released and good to go. I haven't yet found the cause for my stroke, but some strokes don't get the cause and straight away and they don't necessarily get it at all. So this was not a concern that they hadn't found my cause. So that's why they released me. I passed all the tests, probably got A plus. <laughs> and um, naturally I became friends with everybody that worked at the, at the, at the hospital because yeah. like, I was a new age stroke survivor and we were always looking at the positives and laughing. Mm. Like, as crazy as that sounds, in the, at the, after the first stroke we did do a lot of laughing and try to keep with the pos positives. So after a week, I left. Yes. Went on her Euro trip, and two months later, she was back at work. Then three months later, six Kay weeks. Sorry, it was like six to eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, semantics. So yes. six I weeks later, the <laughs> Kate was actually hit with her second stroke, and the second stroke was completely different to the first. Um, even the way it all happened. So Kate was at her friend's house on a weeknight. It was another school break and Kate woke up in the morning alert and terrified. Uh, she asked her friend, what am I doing here? Whose pants am I wearing? What's going on? Her friend straight away identified that this was not Kate. There was something wrong and due to Kate's first stroke, they did act fast and they got her the medical attention she needed. Unfortunately, it was another sneaky stroke. So the cause of it was still unknown and it was still hard for them to actually determine that it was a stroke. At first, Kate was diagnosed with having a virus of the brain. And this actually terrified Kate more because she had previously survived one stroke, with strokes being the leading cause for disability in adults. It's really important that we do act fast and that we are all stroke smart because we can't become complacent. You could have a stroke, your friend could have a stroke. There is no discrimination when it comes to strokes. And so Kate's second stroke hit the hippocampus of the brain, which Kate likes to point out stands for. Well, you might know about hippopotamus, and that is like, it has C in it, right? It's just like a sea animal. So hippo stands for C, and it is your um, little seahorse in your brain and if you can see on the picture it does look like a cute little seahorse. <laughs> <laughs> the hippocampus is responsible for a lot of the memory functions of the brain so they're responsible for forming and storing your brains and actually putting them to the certain parts of your long-term mem memory for storage. Um, Kate's deficiency in this means that she is unlikely to retain majority of things she has been told unless there is a strong emotional connection with that. And the funny thing about that is you can never decide what memory Kate's going to retain and some of them you wish she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so one of Kate's most favourite war wounds and really the only physical sign that she had a stroke is also hidden. Well, it wasn't at the time. Kate had the brain biopsy, and this was another time with us over in Australia where we were fearing Kate's death. You have to get all these tests done that are so invasive and traumatising, and this biopsy actually had 1% chance of death. And I wasn't really confident in living. I thought, yeah, I'm going to die. And so I kind of said all my goodbyes to everybody and um, made yep. sure everyone knew how much I loved them. And then when I was survived, I was actually awfully proud of this war wound, and I still am to this day. It's not only a scar, but it's also a hole. So there's a decent hole in my skull that anyone's welcome to touch. We play around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's nice. Like it's an, it's, 
um, superficial and people can see that, oh, I've actually gone through quite a lot, whereas my short-term memory concerns and my emotional concerns aren't as obvious. So this was also at the time when Kate developed Cotard syndrome. So Cotard syndrome is actually quite common in stroke survivors. It's where the patient actually thinks that they are dead or in a coma and everything that is happening in their life is what they've predicted and they knew was going to happen. They pre-planned this, they can see the future, they've created the future. So this is when myself, along with all of Kate's friends, happy kitty cat clubbers, um, started sending Kate unpredictable selfies to lighten the mood and try to reassure Kate that she could not predict us. This actually was a hard task. <laughs> Um, so, also Kate, once again, was never short of visitors. She had her 27th birthday in hospital and everybody came to visit and spend time. And of course, they captured those moments with photos and Kate's notebook, which she started during the second stroke, just to sort of retain um, even her results. Um, so for the brain biopsy, it did come back inconclusive, like a lot of Kate's tests. Um, there's still a lot of unknowns with Kate's stroke, so moving forward, we try not to dwell on what we don't know, but seek information that, we, that can help us. Um, so leaving London, we had to pack Kate up and do a few little things that Kate wanted to do. Of course, she had to see all of her friends before leaving town, so we got into our PA roles quite quickly with navigating around London and helping Kate to say her last goodbyes as well as a few last hurrahs. Yep. Our mother has since retired to take full-time care of Kate and to be, put more dedication into making Kate an independent woman once again, which is our it's ultimate reward for Kate to be independent and to be able to live her life how she sees fit. Because at the moment, it is very much on my terms as well as mum's. So and that's confronting in itself to be an adult and to not do what you want to do with your life. You have no control and everybody else is controlling it. And it's confronting, but I've adapted, I think, well. Yes. And, you know, it's almost like this is a good thing that's happened to me. It's crazy that sounds like I really do believe this is good, this experience. Yes. And the best things about this is Kate's students from the UK. Kate still reads over the letters and the cards that she received from her students and there is no better ego booster than the words from a child. Especially <laughs> recurring symbols because I just... Show, yeah, show what Kate has taught them. So this is always going to light up Kate's day along with a lot of other outings that we plan. Kate's still very much a social butterfly. She is a little hampered. Like It is a bit difficult to get Kate to the airport and on the plane, and there's a lot, a lot involved. There's a lot of involvement, but you, you would be amazed at how convenient the smartphone is. And I'm so happy that there's apps out there and there's support. And it just, the support you receive from people and, and technology is phenomenal. It's really there if you want it. And so, since returning back to Australia, while it was quite confronting for Kate, um, we always encouraged her to share her journey. While we see it as unique, it still could happen to any of us. So it's sort of, you've got to know that you're not alone and there are ways through this. And Kate has put in a lot of work since she returned back into developing these blogs. And she's done a lot of research. Just, first of all, it started off as us trying to get answers because when we would go and see medical staff, I guess, um, they were really unable to give us answers. They were intrigued by Kate and they wanted to know more about her, but most of Kate's results have come back inconclusive. We still don't know what caused Kate's strokes, but we do know that there are ways that people can avoid potential strokes. And they are simple things like sunlight. Vitamin D is really great at reducing your, your risk of stroke. Hence, London had my strokes. <laughs> <laughs> Could have had something to do yes, with it. Well, I'm, I'm sure. And um, well, like this whole journey, it has been a team effort. We couldn't have got through this if it wasn't for Kate's friends who plan things and get her to come and visit and look after her. And we do make all jokes. make jokes. Make it's all about the jokes. If you ever want a cheese joke, she's your girl.
<laughs> if you are interested in learning more about Strokes and Kate's adventures, as well as her jokes, please look at her blog, Strokes Get the Blokes, and please strive to be stroke smart. Thank you.